to the pasture now and research on a land management approach that may reduce parasites in cattle. So horn flies really affect um, cattle in general. They are, in beef cows specifically, they cause stress, of course, and that stress uh, causes reduced reduce production. So reduced production such as um, lower milk yields, uh, for their calves and in turn we have lower weaning weights on our calves. Horn flies are one of the most important external parasites that can occur in beef cattle operations. So in the adult stage, uh, horn flies are actually taking a blood meal. So they're feeding on the animals and actually feeding on the animals multiple times. Uh, research studies have shown that uh, horn flies can feed up to 30 to 35 different times throughout a day. That's taking 30 different blood meals throughout that, that, that single day. Uh, the other impact is that because there's so many of them on one animal, we can usually average anywhere from 500 to 1,000 horn flies on our animals in Oklahoma, anywhere from June through October. You multiply that feeding behavior by 500 to 1,000, and that's a lot of stress to that animal. Yeah, we've had uh, numerous research projects where we look at uh, horn flies' impacts to the beef system. One particular thing that we've done is look at how uh, a common forage management uh, technique of burning pastures can actually reduce uh, horn fly numbers. And we were uh, able to go out and look at different animal groups on different burning regiments. And so essentially you have some that were considered patch burning, so they only burn a third of the pasture or small portions of that pasture. Uh, and then they also compared that to traditional burning, so burning the whole pasture every three years. We think uh, fire is involved in a two-part system in reducing the number of flies. One, it's modifying the animal's behavior, and so it's fire-driven grazing. So essentially an animal is going to go and graze on that new lush patch after say a spring burn. And then the other thing is it's about fecal distribution. And so what we see, we see maybe more uh, condensed uh, fecal pads in a particular area, but it's on a higher nutrient plane. And we also know through previous research that animals on a higher nutrient plane uh, doesn't support horn fly development because of the kind of microbes that are in the manure. And then the second part to that is actually burning the fecal pats in, in the springtime. We're actually killing flies that are overwintering in those fecal pats. If you use patch burning, uh, specifically, you reduce the amount of horn flies by 40% without any kind of insecticide. So um, when we look at patch burning, we're looking at this as a, an integrated approach uh, because we see a lot of good products out there that we get comments back that say, we don't think that works anymore. We don't think that's necessarily the, the, the case. It's about how long it works. Producers struggle with horn, horn fry control and trying to pick a method that works best for them. I hear that producers say it doesn't work, it can be expensive, but I think if we kind of provide some education, uh, we can show producers there may be different methodology. And so what we want to do is try to integrate some of these uh, pasture-based management tools such as burning into some of our co common insecticide use. And so uh, ex when we look at a horn fly season, we're looking at the patch burning, reducing that initial fly load. So you start off at a lower level, but then incorporating some kind of insecticide treatment to uh, treat the population later on when you're gonna actually have more horn flies. And so when we look at research and extension, we are looking at this as a broad scale team approach uh, where we have team members from natural resource ecology and management. We have team members from ag economics, of course, team members from animal science, as well as uh, specialists out in the field that are in our extension systems at the area level.